I guess I should say that I don't encourage botting in video games, but FNAF is a single player point and click game that's almost a decade old, so I think we're good on that front. I'll talk about the basic gameplay and strategy from the demo now. I'll try to keep this short, but if you want, you can watch this great video by Tech Rules that explains the game more in depth. The goal is to survive for 6 hours, but really around 9 minutes in real time, in a haunted pizzeria without being attacked by the animatronics or running out of power. Power is depleted when the doors are shut, lights are used, and when the camera is on. There are 4 animatronics you need to worry about. A unique number from 0 to 20 called the AI level is assigned to each of them for every night. 0 means that the character doesn't attack, and 20 means that they will move and attack very frequently, thus making the 420 mode extremely difficult. Freddy will attack if he's outside your right door, and you open the camera while the right door isn't closed. Considering he's on 20, he pretty much lives outside the door, and that's why you see the bot making sure the door is closed before opening the camera. Speaking of the camera, the only reason it needs to be opened at all is for Foxy. Foxy has four separate phases. As long as the camera's off, Foxy will try to move towards his next phase through random number generators. So checking the camera as much as possible ensures that he doesn't get to the final phase. If he does, he'll run to your left and you better hope the door is closed, in which case he just takes some of your power and leaves. When the bot notices that Foxy has left Pirate's Cove, it triggers his attack by going to the West Hall camera and then closes the left door. Finally, there's Bonnie and Chica, who attack on your left and right respectively. They're the most straightforward to defend against. The bot checks the door lights, and if either of them are at the door, the door is closed. Then the bot checks the lights to make sure they're gone before opening the doors. Now I'll admit, this isn't the first time that someone has made a bot for this, but I did think of it myself, alright? So a few other people have successfully completed it, but they've pulled the smart move and used C++, which is probably the fastest programming language that's widely used. But I still decided to use my boy Python. And for all those curious folk out there, I use the PyAuto GUI library, which lets you control the mouse movements and locate images on the screen. As you could probably tell, the gameplay in the demo is pretty repetitive, so my first goal was to come up with a loop of actions that would beat the game. When the night begins, there's about 20 seconds of stalling to save as much power as possible. I guess it takes a while for the gang to show up or to discuss game plans or something. Foxy still needs some of that lovin' every so often though. Then the cycle starts with checking on Foxy, then making sure Bonnie and Chica aren't at the doors. This is done by seeing if these images are on the screen when the lights are on. To see if they're gone, it checks for the absence of these images. Bot had trouble detecting the images at first, so I changed the confidence levels to be more lenient. It's okay for bots to lack self-confidence too. The need for this comes from the fact that to make the game more spoopy, Scott Cawthon decided to put distortions and static imagery on the screen. This causes minor differences in what the bot sees and what it compares to. The lights also flash a lot, which means they could be off during the frame that the bot needs to check. In making the game more bone rattling, Scott also made it bot proof. Probably unintentionally if I had to guess. Except he really didn't, cause I just made the bot check twice, to minimize errors. For Foxy, there wasn't much to see to determine if he was gone or not, so I just kept track of his eyes in the penultimate phase. When they were gone, the bot would know that Foxy was gone too. He was feeling extra generous on the winning room, only attacking me once. He's not always that nice though. Sometimes it feels like he's doing an any percent speed run against my bot. The whole cycle is repeated for about 7 minutes and 15 seconds. The whole night is 8 minutes and 55 seconds, so with the stalling at the beginning, the bot waits for 80 seconds. The first 20-ish are to wait with no power consumption, and literally just pray that Foxy doesn't feel like ending her game. Which he almost always does, anyways. Now this is the risky but necessary part, with so little power that you're given. Once the lights turn off though, it's basically all luck. You just need to hope that Freddy takes a long time to attack, like around a minute. Did I mention how luck based this game is? For my run, it took 20 seconds for him to start and finish singing, and after 18 seconds we won. 
according to the odds determined by tech rules, this had a 2.25% chance of happening, and it was absolutely necessary even for the decent run that it already was. I want to end off with a few bugs that I found kind of amusing. In my first attempts to implement anti-foxy maneuvers, this is what happened. Now this occurs when the door is open the exact moment when Foxy is supposed to run in and kill you. The result is the game thinking you've died and yet survived. While in this Schrodinger's Fox predicament, none of the doors, lights, or camera are functional, but the power and time progresses normally. You can't lose either, so it was technically my bot's first win. I just made the bot check for Bonnie too before opening the door again to fix this. For the longest time, the bot would just get stuck checking if Chica was gone. My guess is that it had something to do with the way it flashed? Because at one point it got so bad that Chica actually just came back for round 2. Sometimes when Bonnie or Chica comes in the middle of the light being on, the bot just doesn't see them and just continues. And there's really nothing I can do about that since it's kind of just bad timing, so there's that. Last thing I want to talk about isn't really a bug, but after I automated the bot to keep playing over and over, it would just kind of stare at the title screen for a long time. This is because I set the duration of any game to 9 minutes since that was the longest time it could be, but I forgot that if the bot died early, it would just have to wait until the time was up. This kind of wasted a lot of time when I was, you know, doing trials. So I just let it recognize the stars on the title screen to know if it needs to start a new game. And that's pretty much it. I tried to answer as many questions as there might be for the bot, but I would be happy to answer any other questions. The code's in the description, and feel free to try it, <laughs> um, although I should say that it probably needs some tweaking based on your system. I've never really done commentary this long. I'm sorry if I sound like someone made me as a bot, you know? Hopefully it wasn't too boring, and hopefully it wasn't too long either. I'm going off script now, but if you say this long, Thanks a bunch for watching, this was actually so much fun to make, and I know it's not perfect, but I mean it got the job done, so.